Now, the existence of SOEs is very vital in all aspects of people's lives, ranging from education, health, public health, financial, logistics, and many, many more. And all of these sectors have gone through digital acceleration or digital process, especially during the pandemic. Now, the pandemic has pushed um, all the sectors to propel through the digital uh, acceleration mm -hmm. and it has gone to a point where it has never been considered before. Now, we have also to acknowledge that at the end of the pandemic, the role of digital acceleration would even become bigger as become as a primary factor in making sure that we build and prepare the better future. Now, Telkom Indonesia and the subsidiaries have and will continue to strengthen its role as the main operator that facilitates digitalization in Indonesia. And we're very lucky today we have Pak Ririk Adriansyah yeah. as the President Director of Telkom mm -hmm. Indonesia with us today. And I'm very excited to hear the insights from you, Pak, as the main yeah. uh, operator uh, of Telkom Indonesia, uh, the President Director. So, my first question is, Pak Ririk, now Telkom has been playing a big role in digital acceleration, um, especially during the uh, pandemic of yeah. COVID-19. We know that everybody was push to a point where they have to go through digital yes. adaptation right. in order to survive during the pandemic and telecom played a big role in that. So right. my first question would be, Indonesia is having a very a massive economic growth mm -hmm. and we are still uh, trying to reach that goal by 2045 is the biggest mm. economy of right. uh, what five biggest economy in the world and what are the biggest challenges though we still have challenges such as perhaps our readiness in terms of the skills of the people mm. or maybe collaborations that are still on hold at the moment i would like to hear your insights first okay, of all, uh, there are some challenges uh, let me start uh, the first thing is sector is uh, the uh, connectivity Mm. I think uh, the uh, as Indonesia is one of the biggest uh, islands country, mm -hmm. uh, providing a connectivity to other people is quite challenging and, and uh, quite costly. That's so right. uh, we are supporting the uh, program of, from the uh, Cominfo uh, to deploy. Starting uh, last year, uh, they want to deploy to around twelve thousand uh, villages. Mm. Uh, all over Indonesia. Although that's uh, that's one of the challenges. Uh, currently, we uh, the the four uh, G that we have, uh, Telkom cell uh, covers about the 99 percent of the populations. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's one. Uh, the uh, related to the connectivity, there are two more challenges. One is the providing the gadget. The gadgets. Gadget mm -hmm. because of there are families where the gadget is only only the, only the father or the mother, yeah. but the, they the they kids. have uh, three kids, but. So they have to uh, to, to share the mm. use of the gadget. That's right. The uh, third one in terms of the connectivity is uh, also the as we will learn not uh, during the pandemic is mm -hmm. uh, we need to help them to uh, to purchase the data packets, the mm. quota, because mm. uh, in the normal days most of them are not really need to uh, to buy that quota, but uh, because of the the uh, the government uh, initiative to to have a kind of distant learning, mm -hmm. they need to buy quota. So, we, we uh, through Telkomsel, we provide uh, uh, what we call is is a special uh, price mm -hmm. for the for the uh, for the student, mm -hmm. uh, but the number must be listed. So, yeah. so because otherwise, then uh, it will destroy the the uh, the, uh, the the market. Mm -hmm. That's that's on the connectivity part. Mm -hmm. The second one is actually the readiness of the people mm -hmm. uh, for the uh, digital. I think there are there are two parts. One is the people who will use the the the, the, the innocent people. Not all of them are actually uh, literate, people, uh, prepared to, to, to use the uh, the platform. The, gadgets, mm. the second part is actually is digital talent, which we need to to further develop the uh, digital platform. We what we have is uh, is what we have is less than what we need. To use. So that's uh, that's another one. Another one is uh, in terms of the uh, the regulation, this kind of stuff. I think mm -hmm. that's also something that that uh, we need to uh, mm -hmm. to take a look and and uh, uh, to further supporting the uh, mm -hmm. the use of the digital search. But uh, I'm a big believer that digital uh, can do a lot for this country. That's right. So there are still challenges from the connectivity, yes. from yes. the readiness of its people, yes. as well as from the ever-changing technologies right. that you mentioned. Right. Yeah. Now, one of the um, probably uh, 
things that we need to highlight as well is the digital poverty or the internet poverty as you right. mentioned that um, in Indonesia people say that it's quite expensive still so how do you think we can actually try to um, uh, try to provide more affordable um, internet access yeah. um, for our uh, greater society of Indonesia as you mentioned as well that uh, many many people very uh, very um, having its limitations not only of its gadgets but also to buy the quota for example yeah. and now yeah. the distant learnings and also a lot of businesses are now conducted right. through digital yeah well um, I think uh, the government also have a plan uh, to to I think it's going to be launched sometime in 2024 mm -hmm. uh, the uh, what they call this a uh, high throughput satellite mm -hmm. uh, HCI so it's basically providing a uh, through satellite, providing a uh, fire Wi-Fi to to all the uh, the remote area. Mm. Uh, the the only difference with uh, cellular is Wi-Fi. They must use it uh, whether they put the Wi-Fi in the in the in the school or in the uh, in the uh, county or whatever. But it may not be available at the at the houses mm. uh, compared to cellular it will be available uh, everywhere. But Wi-Fi is due to the nature that the coverage is mm. is quite limited. So the people must come to, to that point uh, mm. before they can use it. But uh, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, cost, I think it should be much much lower. Mm. All right. So hopefully it's going to come in the, um, in due course in 2024, right. as yes. you mentioned. Yes. Now it's very much resounded during this uh, SOE International yeah. Conference that. Um, all of our focus needs to go through the um, the main focus of sustainability and inclusivity right. in, in every way that we do. Right. Now, SOEs um, have been playing a great role in this, especially yeah. Telcom as well. Um, and in Telcom, I see that it is going through this business transformation right yes. now. Um, yes. It has become a digital telecommunications company now. But I think how far has the process gone so far? Well, uh, it's still on ongoing. Uh, we declared the transformation is back in uh, late 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, so we it's been uh, three years. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, it's uh, progressing quite well as what we expect. But of course, it's, it's still from 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 uh, from completed. Mm. So uh, it's ongoing. Uh, if we look at uh, the we look at uh, uh, the way that we look at this, is, I guess can can we, can we uh, several ways. One is, in terms of the revenue of telecom, is also structure is the general revenue is the contribution is getting getting bigger. Mm. Then the the other way of looking looking at this actually is is uh, what the people see, what the people uh, uh, feels people about about telecom. Right. Mm. One of one of the uh, the achievement that uh, we've been uh, proud of is actually is, uh, the Peduli Lindungi. Yep. Peduli Lindungi is uh, probably so uh, one of the biggest. Yeah. Uh, apps, apps being used by by the uh, the people of Indonesia, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that was initiated by uh, by Telkom to help the people. So I think I think I think uh, those are some of the some of the things. Mm -hmm. uh, the opportunity is huge, uh, but Telkom cannot do it all alone. Uh, yeah. We need yeah. to yeah. be uh, partnering uh, mm -hmm. with somebody else, uh, and also I think the government also need to do something. Mm -hmm. uh, one of uh, I think one of the idea that I have and discussed to to them is Probably the government need to have kind of, I don't know what they call it, but kind of the the agent uh, to mm. orchestrate the the what the national digital transformation, mm. something like that. I think need need to be. Otherwise, then it's not well coordinated. Mm. For example, uh, if we if we look at what is happening now, all the the government agency they keep their own data. Yeah. Why don't we have a kind of satu data? Which I think data center, yeah, big one. Big one. It's, it, 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 it not just in, in terms of the uh, the place to 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 store the server, but mm. it's more like because uh, every every agency they have their own data. So, but it's not well coordinated. For instance, uh, the last time when when uh, the government distribution for the the support of the people, the poor people, yeah. it's not that accurate mm -hmm. because of even uh, the uh, the data who's, who deserves to can can yeah. get this this fund mm -hmm. is not accurate. So, mm -hmm. but if we have kind of uh, data, some data integrated, and then mm -hmm. uh, we use the uh, data analytic, uh, I think it's really much much better. Mm -hmm. And that's I think uh, the best starting point is having kind of some data for the nation. I think that's uh, that's going to be going to yeah. be great. 
We could also some uh, um, actions have been taken in yeah. s within the government itself, especially in the SOEs. We know that there are uh, streamlining in its yeah, yeah. Uh, holdings as well. Yeah. And now the big data that you mentioned uh, or the center of data that is integrated mm. within all the governments as well would probably uh, enable that to happen as well. Right. Hopefully it's going to happen in due course as well. Yes. But because uh, we heard that uh, there are a lot of um, holes that happen just because we are not so uh, communicative into each other yeah, yes, because of the yes, uh, data that we have, right? So um, we want to go back to uh, the first time of the pandemic when it hit Indonesia, yeah. March 2020, um, and Telkom played its role as well, now creating the Paduli Lindungi mm. apps. What kind of lessons do you think uh, that we learn biggest from this pandemic in terms of digital acceleration? Well, uh, for us, uh, the biggest lesson is, actually is, is that digital is quite important. And uh, I think a lot of lot more things that we can that can be done with the digital. Mm -hmm. And it's actually when, when uh, you live in Jakarta, like a, a virtual meeting, it yeah. saves times. Well, right? it's uh, it, we we don't have to travel for, That's right. uh, from one point to another point. It takes uh, probably most of the time. Uh, but the, even with the with the virtual meeting, mm -hmm. we can jump from one meeting to another meeting quite fast. Right. Even uh, so in some cases, uh, we have a two parallel meeting, right? So, so I think, I think uh, that's uh, the uh, the the uh, simple way that that I think even though the pandemic is uh, hopefully it will be uh, will be uh, ended and, soon, and ended soon uh, yeah. but we can still do some of those uh, uh, continuing doing using that to be just uh, more efficient in terms of mm. uh, time, in terms of uh, mm. cost. So, I think that is one. The other thing is 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 it's kind of giving us kind of proof what, what we believe that digitalization is actually the only way mm -hmm. if Indonesia want to kind of leapfrog toward uh, close to, to the more developed countries mm -hmm. uh, in terms of nothing, in terms of education, mm -hmm. health, so many things. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the, going through digital is is probably the best way. Mm -hmm. and and. If you look at uh, a lot of things, like uh, for instance, education. Education. If you ask uh, with the government to build so many old school, mm -hmm. physical school, I don't think uh, it's it's going to be happen because mm -hmm. it's too costly, too takes uh, too long. Mm -hmm. And even if you have the school, then uh, the teacher, the good teacher, might not be willing to to work in the remote area. So, yeah. so why don't we use uh, the education platform so that uh, every every student. Uh, doesn't matter where they live, mm -hmm. as long as there's connectivity, mm -hmm. they can enjoy the same quality of education with the uh, the people who live in you know bigger city. Yeah, that's right. It cuts all the boundaries of geographical, right. especially yes. Indonesia is a uh, seventeen thousand right. yes. islands, right? Yes. Uh, so um, one of the uh, tasks from uh, Pak Eric mentioning uh -huh. as well that in SOEs is not only it's as uh, a main driver of acceleration. Um, also making sure that it's also wealthy, it can create economic value. Right. So how do you think Telkom can do that, especially in the time around when we are trying to recover from the pandemic? The end of the pandemic is very close to us, hopefully. Yes. So how is Telkom going to commence in that? Well, uh, what uh, we are trying to do for now is actually is uh, helping the other company, including mm -hmm. SOE or other private company, mm -hmm. and also the, uh, the government to more utilize the potential of the uh, digital technology. I think that's, uh, that's more. And, and a lot of uh, value that can be created. Uh, even uh, if you look at the uh, SOE, I think uh, the, the number of SOE who's really uh, extract the price value of, from digital is still very small. Mm -hmm. Only very few of them. If we can do this uh, in, a, in a much better way and faster, the potential is huge. Mm -hmm. Personal for the for the SOA itself, mm -hmm. they can be more productive. They can address probably a bigger market. So there are two ways. Of, because they can be uh, increasing the potential revenue that they can by accessing a bigger market, mm -hmm. and at the same time they can, can also be more productive, mm -hmm. uh, more cost efficient, cost efficient, more mm -hmm. transparent. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we've been uh, working with uh, some of the SOA, and mm -hmm. so far the uh, result is, is quite good. But the challenges are huge because mm -hmm. the SOE not not at the same level. Some of the maturity level or the readiness. Mm -hmm. Some SOE are they are prepared. They are mm -hmm. quite ready to, to 
to jump to digital uh, yeah. platform, but some is need hmm. to certainly afford to, to be ready. That's right. Um, I just I just reminded by you that um, you said this geographical um, yeah. obstacles can actually be um, handled th through the digital process, yeah. right? So um, as we know that in, in, in Southeast Asia, the digitalization process is very, very fast and Indonesia is also trying to catch up. But we probably have not quite enough um, skills for yeah. now for our IT people that yeah. can actually not only um, having the digitalization process, but also monetizing this even bigger. And right. Indonesian people are full of gadgets. They love being engaged right. in the internet, yes. but they don't know how to make money. So what is, from your point of view, the biggest homework for us now, right now? Well, uh, if you, uh, the biggest one is actually is, is uh, how can we bring uh, to use the digital technology for the uh, SME or MSMEs? Mm -hmm. I think that's a, that's a, as you were well read it, they contributing to what uh, one in ninety percent, probably ninety seven percent of the economy of Indonesia, mm -hmm. including uh, the employment also. Uh, they, they provide probably ninety five, ninety seven percent. Mm -hmm. uh, so bring them to the digital is 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 really a big thing that can happen. Mm -hmm. I know that, that the, again the challenge is is, is is huge, but the potential also very very big. Mm -hmm. As pa Eric mentioned that uh, by twenty thirty. The potential economy, the digital economy of Indonesia is is more than four, I think it's about forty five hundred trillion rupiah, mm -hmm. which uh, represent about forty percent of the of the uh, of the size of the economy mm -hmm. in ASEAN market, mm -hmm. and the growth is about eight eight times, and the digital economy of Indonesia is uh, growing about eight times faster than the GDP itself. So I think. The only way, if we want to 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 reach to a certain level and close to the the uh, the different countries, I think the government must also supporting how can we grab the potential of digital economy as much as we can. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'd like to go to this uh, topic about uh, Telkom Indonesia um, going through business transformation, yes. Pak Ririk, um, to become digital telecommunication oh, yes. company. So how far has the process been gone so far? Gone well, uh, so far? It's, uh, it's still uh, it's ongoing. So uh, mm -hmm. we are trying to, because Telco used to be focused on the connectivity. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we are we are still going to be doing the, the connectivity, mm -hmm. but we need to do beyond that one. Mm -hmm. We will, uh, uh, other than the what we call digital connectivity, we have uh, the second uh, second pillar that we have is is what we call a digital uh, platform, which mm -hmm. consists of things like data center, cloud, big data, IoT, this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the third one is actually is, uh, what we call digital service. Mm -hmm. It's uh, in a simple way, it's like uh, application apps. Mm -hmm. On the apps, uh, some we develop ourselves, but some other we working with somebody else. So, mm -hmm. from connectivity toward uh, digital platform and then uh, apps or services, mm -hmm. we open up the the opportunity to to, to have a partner because uh, we understand that our competence is starting from from telco, yeah. and yeah. then getting to the right is, is getting less. So that's why we need we need the uh, help of somebody else. Mm -hmm. So collaboration, collaboration is the key yes. in that. Now, yes. in the big uh, umbrella of uh, digital transformation, there is digitization as well. Right. Now, it, how 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 hard is it? I mean, um, telecom is an SOE, and mm. probably it has certain bureaucracy in it. How difficult is it to transform all of the um, layers inside telecom to be digitized in this case? Well, uh, it is also a big challenge because uh, mm. if we uh, look at the the. Uh, the culture of being a telco. Mm -hmm. Telco is always started from technology. Whenever there are, uh, there's a new technology, then we implement them, and then uh, we offering to the customers. So start from ourselves. Start from the technologies available mm -hmm. uh, to uh, to the market. Digital is a totally different story. Digital start from the customers because digital we must start from what is the uh, the uh, problem that the people have. Mm -hmm. Or if there's no problem, then what can we do so that these people we can help them uh, so that their, their life much easier. So starting from 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 the people, starting from from the market, from the customers. So it's, it's totally different. Different. So 
the one of the challenges today is besides the uh, adding a new competence uh, to telecom, also switch the, uh, the mindset, switch the culture mm. that they should be looking at the customer first instead of themselves. Instead of what it's not it's not it's not a matter of what can we do, yeah. but it's a matter of what they need. Right. Mm. So changing the mindset yes. that it has to come from the uh, right. insights of the customers, what they right. need, yes. and then we can provide something to them. Right. All right. So this is very, very interesting. Um, we also, um, I, I want to know your opinion, Pak Ririk. Mm. So uh, as part of the SOE ministry, of course, uh, what are telecom's responsibilities in the current uh, digital system development? And and we know that uh, the government is trying to uh, create some kind of an ecosystem that um, you know, all the stakeholders are taking part in it, not only the government, yeah. but also all layers of the society. So what is the role of telecom itself? Well, uh, the, uh, the main role of course is, uh, is uh, being a telecom, we provide the connectivity. Mm -hmm. uh, there are two, uh, two things. One is that we must, we must uh, fulfill whatever the commitment mm -hmm. that we have. Uh, the commitment in terms of the uh, telco is commitment to the uh, common for Because uh, we got a license and within the license there's a certain commitment. So that's uh, that one. Beyond that, uh, we work with uh, with uh, with uh, certain parties, mainly uh, coming for Bhakti, uh, to further deploy the connectivity to the remote area. Mm. With being a telco, our mandatory is one is that uh, fulfill the commitment. The second yeah. one is is uh, we must have pay the U.S. fund uh, uh, mm. to help the government to deploy in the non-commercial remote area. So that's that one, uh, that's that what, what, uh, what, uh, the, what we responsible. Mm -hmm. The second part is actually is, uh, is how can we uh, help uh, the government, help the, mm -hmm. the, uh, the LC uh, and of the, the people in, in general mm -hmm. uh, to start to use the digital uh, so that uh, the, this country can, can, like I said before, uh, can be uh, doing kind of reaching the level where it's close to the uh, more developed country mm. in terms of a lot of things like education, health uh, and, and, and a lot of things. So I think uh, those, those are the two parts of, mm -hmm. of, of the, the main role of the telecom is connectivity and then uh, uh, the implementation of digital technology itself. All right. Now, uh, you mentioned about um, the uh startup companies, the SMEs yes. as well. So um, there are many investments that have uh, had positive impacts yeah. on Telcom's financial statements. Are there any special criteria for them, for the startups companies, to receive funds from yeah. Telcom? Yes, uh, we our involvement in the, in the startup is, uh, at the earlier stage, we facilitated them to to have kind of, uh, to access to the incubation. Mm -hmm. But in terms of investment, uh, we there is a I think there are MDI in Intercom and the MI in, mm -hmm. in Intercom Cell, which are doing like a CVC uh, for the common and the Intercom Cell. The main criteria that we always use whenever we we, we need to invest yeah. is uh, two things. One is the potential uh, capital gain that uh, they have. The second thing is, is also is uh, as important as the first one is what are the potential synergy mm -hmm. between the startup and uh, uh, and uh, and telecom group or or including with with mm -hmm. other SOE? Mm -hmm. So I think that's that's, that's what differentiates ourselves yeah. with the uh, the uh, the PE or the CV uh, in in uh, in, in China. Synergy okay. is quite important. Okay. So uh, that's a that's a main criteria. And then in order to do that, uh, periodically we have a, what we call is a kind of business matching. Mm -hmm. uh, Business matching between the startup mm -hmm. and telecom group, and also business matching between the startup and other SOE. Mm. Okay, so uh, you choose startup companies to invest. I mean, um, aren't you afraid of this bubble um, startup companies' investment? I mean, a lot of companies are now opt for more um, uh, established yeah, yeah. companies to put their money in. So why is telecom choosing this path? Well, um, because uh, we fully realize that we cannot do it by, by ourselves. Mm. So we win a startup. And on the bubble side, we mitigate the risk by having uh, the synergy. Because on the capital gain uh, can be up and down, mm -hmm. but the synergy hopefully is something for real. Mm -hmm. uh, and the good thing about synergy is 
One is it's a it's a real money, right? Uh, the second thing is even also uh, accelerate uh, the uh, development of the startup itself. When uh, we provide the access uh, yeah. to the approval access to to the to the SOE, I think that's a, that's that, that's a, something that, that uh, mm -hmm. beneficial for for both sides, the right. startup and then the and then the the investor, and also mitigating the risk of being bubble. Mm, so th those are some mutual right. um, yeah. things that you would like to get from that uh, investment. Yeah. Um, so um, you said that we have a very big potential. Indonesia has yes. very, very potentials regard, although we still have a lot of homeworks as well. So um, how do you see the potential for Indonesia in terms of its digital acceleration? For example, in five years from now, what will we see? One is uh, the, the uh, size of the digital economy will be growing mm. uh, rapidly. Mm. And second is, is I think uh, there are going to be a lot of people uh, using digital, not only the social media, but mm. uh, using it uh, for more productive things. And then uh, we do expect that also the the uh, SME or MSMEs who's riding on the digital platform mm. is going to be a lot, a lot more. Mm -hmm. mm. All right. So, if you have um, insights about for um, all of the Indonesian uh, people mm. out there, especially the ones who are watching us mm. right now, um, as we transform ourselves into more digitalized yeah. and also digitized as well, um, how can we participate in this so that we can achieve that ecosystem? We can achieve that target to become one of the biggest economy by 2045, for example. Well, uh, it, it, it it really uh, depends on, on uh, what uh, what you do. Uh, mm. Assuming that uh, you one of the uh, SME or the SME, then mm -hmm. then uh, they come together with the uh, the uh, SOE uh, minister office. Uh, we are preparing kind of what we call spadi UMKM. Mm -hmm. this, uh, basically, uh, any any UMKM who want to uh, to to sell their product uh, yeah. to the it started with the SOE uh, environment first, but then uh, later on you can can also sell it to other community. I think that you can uh, you can use it, uh, that uh, that one. All right, so it's beginning from that, and hopefully right. all of the layers of the societies can also right. take part, yes. not only the government, the SOEs. So when we do it collaboratively, yes. uh, of course, with others as well, we can achieve the target. Right. Um, but Eric, thank you so much for the insights. Thank you, yeah. thank thank you, you. for sitting down with me and um, talk about this digital acceleration, especially in Indonesia. Hopefully, all of the targets, all of the homework can be Hopefully. done accordingly. Thank, you. thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. So that was our discussion with the President Director of PT Telkom Indonesia, Mr. Ririk Adriansyah. Telkom had and will continue to strengthen its role as the main agent for digital transformation here in Indonesia and hopefully to enable the digital economy soon in our country and of course it needs a lot of supports and a lot of um, involvement not only from the government and SOEs but also from all layers of societies in our country Indonesia thank you for watching my name is Rahma Ali and I'll see you in other programs bye